We glorify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Behold, the wisdom and the knowledge of God, who created the clouds of the sky and the waves of the sea, that gave man breath in his lungs and the intelligence to even think up the knowledge that it takes to build such a bridge. The, intri the intricate architectural design, something that we even was able to create so many years ago that stands the test of time. And if you look throughout human history, you will see testaments to the great feats of man. But through the ages, each one of those things have perished and fallen in some way. One day this bridge will no longer be serviceable. One day this bridge will no longer be able to be used. Circle around here. But my friends, the Word of God, it stands forever. Throughout the test of time, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the Word of God does not fail. And the Word of God gives us so much information about how to make it through life, how to navigate the storms and the trials of circumstance and tribulation. We suffer so many things. Many women out here are suffering from anxiety, despair, discouragement, heaviness of the soul. So much suffering from abuse, childhood neglect, abuse from fathers or mothers. We're suffering and we're hurting inside. And I'm here to tell you that one touch from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and he can make your path straight. Let God breathe into your lungs once again to give you that breath of life, not just to live on this earth, but to have a spiritual life with him, that you can know that you're a child of the Most High God. My friends, we must be born again, and when God puts his spirit in us and seals us to the day of redemption, we become a temple unto God to be used for his glory, to forsake sin, and to pursue righteousness. The Bible says that Jesus is the way. Jesus himself sang in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And that no man comes to the Father but by him. He is the door. He is the resurrection and the life. And we as his children, if we have been born again, are the salt of the earth. And the Bible says for us to taste and see that the Lord is good. And so we hear as a testimony of his goodness, to shine a light into your darkness, to give you hope in times of peril. Because the day is late, the night is far spent, darkness is over our lands, our country is in decay, and God is wanting to bring revival and spiritual awakening of the soul. But it takes a people groaning in the spirit, turning unto God. It's not gonna happen through big Christian meetings and thousands of people in Washington, D.C singing worship songs, smiling and dancing. It's going to come through a groaning of the soul. It's going to come through a humbleness of the heart to find humility at the cross, to realize that we are nothing but through Jesus we can be everything. And God is faithful. Call on Jesus while there is time. Hear the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. The Bible says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let us turn to the Lord and he will have mercy. Taste and see that he is good. He said, I am the bread of life that came down from heaven. Eat and be satisfied. Eat and be filled. Find life in Jesus. Not just a wonky caricature of religion that you've heard about on television or radio, but the true and living God that came to this earth didn't just die, but he rose from the dead. And the same power and spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead is being offered freely to, to you to live in you, to work in you, to bring transformation of the soul and to give you life and life more abundantly. Because this is the measure of a man, to live for God, to give him glory, to preach his truth and to die and to be honored before him in his kingdom. That he would lift you up for all the wonderful things that you did in obedience, sacrificing comfort, sacrificing money, sacrificing time to reach souls with the gospel, to make a difference in society so that we can be better. Because we do a lot of posturing, we do a lot of pretending like we're good to people, but really on the inside we're nasty. We walk by people who are suffering every day and we don't care. We don't care. 
We pretend to care, but we have become desensitized to the suffering of people. And it is the, the nature of a man, the sinful nature of a man to be normalized to things, the blessings of God being poured out in our life and we take it for granted. Before you know it, our society is in decay, our jobs are in peril, we're working nine to five and it means nothing, we're grinding for the dollar, the dollar doesn't, doesn't have a lot of value in today's world, we're printing money, pretending like the economy is okay and we keep spending. We spend and we spend and we spend and we're pretending like everything is okay. But my friends, at some point, we will have to face the full consequence of the state of the nation, the direction that we're headed. God is not mocked. We live in a nation where society mocks God, takes the name of Jesus Christ in vain every single day. People who say they're atheists and who do not believe in God, yet they'll at every moment say the name of Jesus Christ in their curse words. And I'm here to tell you, God is not mocked. What a man sows, he's going to reap. But we're going to see the consequence of a nation that's defied God and shaken his fist, shaken their fists at God for too long. And God will fully turn his back on us. And what will happen to our nation? We see it even now. A departure. A departure from morality, a departure from the goodness of the human condition. There is some good inside of us. But we see such a departure, a darkness over the United States of America. It's time to come home. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you can be saved. What does it profit us if we gain the world and the forth our soul? My friends, we live for the hustle, we live for the grind, but what are we really living for? We're stuck in a system that does not care nor appreciate you. I'm here to tell you that God can wake you up, give you eyes to see that there's something deeper, something more meaningful, that the love of God can transcend all of the nonsense that we're forced to live through each and every day, that the love of God can give you purpose, the love of God can give you a reason to go through life, to help people, to make a difference. I want you to know the love of God. God so loved the world, he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in it would not perish, but have everlasting life. But the Bible says that this is the condemnation that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. All like sheep we've gone astray. And Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, he came to this earth and lived a perfect life and laid down his life on the cross. The certificate of death being nailed to the cross with Christ so that your sins might be forgiven. All you have to do is confess and believe to surrender and give yourself fully and completely to God. And he will make all things new. He'll give you purpose and peace and direction. Jesus said to Nicodemus, we must be born again. You're born the first time from your mother's womb of the water, but you must be born of the Spirit. And the Spirit of God, when it enters into the soul of man and marks man's heart with his own spirit, we become a temple and we can't defile that temple. We can't walk through life sinning against ourselves and sinning against others and thinking there's no consequence. Jesus can't forgive us. But don't damage your body and soul so much that it's beyond repair. Jesus can bring restoration and healing, but my friends, we cannot keep treating our bodies as though it's a piece of trash to be thrown away. We're giving ourselves over to every man, every woman that we meet, desperate for relationships. We're going through Tinder like it's a menu on a restaurant in a restaurant. We're defiling our soul, we're corrupting our bodies, we're damaging the inside, the delicate pieces of your identity being corrupted and damaged through every broken relationship, every time your heart is broken, every time your emotions are damaged, every time you're done wrong and betrayed and cheated on and neglected by someone, you're a little bit more broken. And I'm here to tell you no self-help book, no college course, no YouTube video can fix the damaged soul. It's only through Jesus Christ. Jesus and the finger of God alone can fix the brokenness in your soul. But you got to run to him and repent and humble yourself before him and submit to his authority. He loves you. He cares about you. He doesn't want us to perish in our sin. It's not the will of God for us to perish. But it is, he wants us to all come to the knowledge and saving grace of who he is. But my friends, we chuckle through life, we shake our fists at God, we defy Him, 
and then we wonder what's wrong with society, we wonder what's wrong with our families, we wonder what's wrong with maybe the core of who you are, your anxiety and your fear and your worry. Some people are walking through life worrying about every single thing around them. You're scared constantly. I'm here to tell you, if you know God is in control, you don't have to fear nothing. If you know that God is in control, what is there to fear? Whether I live or whether I die, it's for the glory of God. I know that this life is not the only life. That when I die, I'm going to be with God for eternity. There's power in that. There's peace in that. To know that this reality is but a moment, a twinkling in the height and depth and breadth of, re of eternity. I'm here because I care about you, man. He's shaking his head. We're here because we care. We're not out here wasting our time. I'm not out here making any kind of money. I don't want you to know my name, my ministry. I don't want your Zell donation. I just want you to know Jesus and his love. That's it. I'm not here hustling as a, a street performer. I'm out here to preach the gospel because we are commanded as Christians to declare the glory of God and what Jesus has done to lift him up to be a trumpet in these dark days, to be a light in the darkness so that Jesus can be glorified. We want your children to know the love of God. The Bible says raise your kids up in the way that they should go. Don't give them over to the government to raise them for you. Train your children in the way that they should go and when they are old, they will not depart from it. We want your kids to know the love of God. We want your families to know the love of God, the blessing of God. The day is late, the night is far spent. Ladies and gentlemen, your souls are being weighed in the balance. And I'm here today desperate for you to know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Because I know one day each of us will take our last breath and you're going to die. And I want you to stand before him well. We will stand before him naked in our sin. Your mama, your daddy will not be there. And you will be forced to give an account for the things that you have done. And we should fear God. This should be something we're very afraid of. The Bible says fear God and depart from evil. Some of us, we sin against God and defy him with no fear. We're bold in our corruption. We're bold in our rebellion. But if he stood before us in all of his power and glory, you would not even be able to stand. Your face would be on the ground. This testimony in the Bible of even just a, just a, a, a little piece of God's presence and glory before the eyes of man, breaking them completely, falling into heaps on the ground as though they were dead, being lifted up only by the power of God. This is what I want you to understand, my friend. The heavens and the earth declare the glory of God. God doesn't need me, but he has chosen me in this time to send me out and to use me in just a little bit of a way so that your life can be touched by his presence, his love, his purpose, so that if you call upon him, what's up? Let's have a conversation. Give me a dirty look. We want you to know just a moment of God's love, to understand that he cares about you, he sees your circumstance, he does not want you to perish in your sin. But oh, like sheep, we've gone astray. We're falling off the cliff and by the multitude, shaking our fists defiantly against God, even as we're falling into the fire. A hundred and like 75,000 people a day die, most of them dying in their sin. We say, well, how can God do this, my friend? We're doing this because you have the opportunity even now and you're yawning and saying, no, thank you. We do this to ourselves. You have a choice. If God wanted to save us by force, he wouldn't give you a choice. He would just make us robots and force us to give obeisance to him. But he wants a people to call his own, that choose him, that choose to love him, that want to glorify him and worship him and love him with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. So while there's breath in our lungs, we have an opportunity to call on Jesus and say, Jesus, you are Lord, save my soul, make me new, change my life. God bless you, New York City. God bless you. Wherever you're coming or going, I pray that God would be with you and bless your steps. Pray that you would come to the knowledge of who Jesus is. Repent while there is time. Repent for the kingdom of God has come near to you. Repent means I'm turning away from sin and turning towards God. That's all it means. To make a decision to change the direction of our life. To not just live life for ourselves, but to live life for God alone. To give him glory in everything that we do. Not just with your church attendance or your tithe money. I don't want your money. I don't want your attendance. I don't want your membership. I just want you to know Jesus in the core of your soul. 
that his spirit would live inside of you that when you die you can know I belong to him and he belongs to me that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life how beautiful it is that man can create such a bridge but my friend how much more glorious is it that God can create all this beautiful world around us let us give God the honor that he deserves. Let us worship him in spirit and in truth. Let him shine his light upon your path and bless your steps. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you and your family. Amen.